Today I decided to take some screenshots of your questions and make a dedicated video to answer some of the questions. So if you have any questions, you can leave them on this video, you can leave them on other videos and I will do my best to make more of this series. This video is sponsored by us, We are Division Academy. So if you want to learn Unreal Engine, right now we have a Blueprint course that's starting tomorrow on a weekly basis for the next four months. We are creating our own Blueprint from scratch. So if you're looking for somewhere to learn Unreal Engine, Blueprint for architecture, to create interactive visualizations, if anyone is interested in building their own Archface Explorer, check out VR Division Academy. With that being said, let's get started. So the first question is by Khalik Kande. I'll do my best not to slay names, but the question is, I am trying this for an interior scene for uh, the pawn is starting from a, while, a mile away, even after moving the camera into a space. This is the Archface Explorer tutorial. And here, if you want to create or use the project, repurpose it for interior projects, you can definitely do that. So let's open the project and see if we can fix it. So here we are in an Archphys Explorer. If you press play, the default location of the camera is very far away. And let's fix that. So the first thing I want to do first is to get rid of the welcome menu. Shout out to Carl Detroit for making this awesome project. But we need to fix multiple things. So let's go to blueprints and from here we can go to widgets. We can open blueprint master menu widget and let's go to the graph. This is the widget editor where you can design your user interface and from here you can design the functionality of that. So let's disable this and compile and now if you press play we are directly inside the project. So we want the camera to be as close as possible to the interior at the start of the project. The way you can do that is by finding the camera. So let me press here. So this is the big one. And this is actually nice that it's big as an icon. So when you select the camera, you want to go and perhaps do this to enable the components or to see the components of this blueprint actor because this is more than a camera and find the spring arm. Now go to camera, target arm length. Right now it's set to 20,000 units. We can set this to, let's say, 500 units and it, it's much closer to our project here. All right, so we switch the target arm length to 500 or 200. And now when you press on play, the camera will be exactly where you want it and you can move. But be careful with using this for an interior project because it's not really intended. You can modify it if you want. Now, let's move to the next question. How to change the default time at beginning? And right now we don't have well, we have the sun and it's related for the environment. If you search in the word outliner in the folders, we have environment layering, B, P, environment, and here it has its components. You can simply select the directional light and press Ctrl L if you want to change the location, but we all know that. Now, if you're using Archphys Explorer, instead of using this basic lighting system that does not have anything on it, what you can use, the best thing you can do is delete the main or the current light source and let's add a new light source that comes with Archphys Explorer and that you can find under Blueprints here. This is what we were using, the normal environment, and this is what you want, the sun and sky blueprint. Add this to the project, and the main benefits of this, it's similar to sun and sky that we have in the plugins, where you can set the latitude, longitude, time zone, and so on. And regarding the solar time, if you set like, let's say, 7 in the morning, and click on play, when you click on play, you have the slider that is related for the sun, and you can change time of day, and it looks so nice, very cool. You can see even that we have lights. And yeah, that's it for this question. If you have any more questions, just let me know. Now, the third question, if we go back to Canva, is about enabling collisions in Unreal Engine. I cannot see this setting in 5.4. Collision complexity for property matrix is gone. And this is related if you want to edit many static meshes together. When you select these and you right click, you go to asset actions, and then we want to find edit selection in property matrix. If you watch one of the old tutorials he was referring to via property matrix, we will see a list of our selected static meshes here and all the options we can change here. So where we need to go, static mesh, 
body setup and go to the same setting we added it in the static mesh editor which is collision complexity don't forget to so collision complexity let's try and see if we can find it i have my actors i can select them let's go to static mesh body setup and collision complexity i was kind of confused earlier i couldn't find it but it feels like because they changed the user interface we it's tricky to find so collision complexity you can choose from four options default use simple collision as complex use complex collision as simple if you want to learn more about collisions in unreal engine let me know in the comments so i hope this answers your question this is in 5.4 now let's go back to the presentation where we have the questions and go to the fourth question so sir how to fix flicker in unreal engine 5.4 i tried every possible way but helpless please help to be honest in order to help in what flicker i can help you with i will leave i need to see what flicker you're struggling with because there are so many types of flickers one i struggled with is if you put really high settings on anti-aliasing lumen will go crazy and you will see so many flickers so if you're rendering lumen scenes stay away from anti-aliasing if possible or switch to baked lighting if you want to use like really high settings and zero flickering if anyone have any feedback or suggestions on how to remove flickering with from lumen in general or things to do let us know in the comments and soon in the third lesson of our lighting series i'm gonna make guide on lighting and also how to deal with lighting issues so stay tuned next it's a great tip but doesn't work for landscape is there a workaround for this so this is about a video called paste here this is one of my favorite unreal engine tips and it seems that is not working on the landscape so let's see and test here i'm gonna add the landscape press shift 2 to switch to the landscape mode and let's create any new landscape and let's switch to shift 1 again and let's see what we want to paste here i'm gonna quickly see if we have any object like this guy that's a big object yeah so this object here is not the best location for a collision no problem so if you right click an asset or Control c then right click somewhere and go to edit you have an option to paste an object where you clicked and i set a shortcut for it shift v so i click here shift v to paste somewhere but i'm afraid of trying it on landscape and see if it works now it looks like it's working on my case so it's pasting every time what you may need to check if whether your object has collision on it or not maybe that is the reason it's not working perhaps i'm not sure but this is unreal 5.4 and it seems that paste here still works even if you're using a landscape the next question is from larry and it's on the lighting lesson so let's read it great tutorial your explanation is great you're easy to understand thank you so much thank you too so much the question I have is, if you put multiple cameras in a room, can you control the light sources for each camera separately? So that as you look through each camera to get rendering shots, you can adjust the lighting source to that camera specifically without changing the lighting source that has been set to the other cameras. After spending a lot of time getting the light source set up for one camera, one on one side of the room, then you switch over to another camera, get the lighting source set up on the last camera, get your shot, but then you want to go back to another camera and you get the idea. And all the lighting sources has been changed, so you have to adjust it again and again to that camera, if, you, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. I can't even read, but it does. I think it can be done, but I just haven't found any videos on YouTube for that. I got you, Larry. So if we go to Unreal Engine and let's open another project where we have our lighting tutorial series happening all right so we are back this is the project and here i have my normal light and also i have two lights that are emitting light on the table so check this out in the sequencer and what you can do with it here i have the level sequence is called master lighting fun Woo! let's open it here what do we find when you open this level sequence, you can notice that the lighting changed and the lights here are no more emitting light. And why is that? 
Well, if we click on our sequencer, here we can see we have two shots and if you open any of these shots, you can see the shot is from here to here and I spoiled the surprise, but you can tell in the subsequences, I have a level sequence and it's called kitchen lighting and it's mixed with these two shots. So my end result is something like this. So you can open this level sequence to see what's happening and it has six tracks. It has the two light sources and the sun and sky and the directional light where I change the solar time. So now I can set the solar time to night, let's say. And if I close this, save it and close it and I open here again, it's back to this light, right? It's like kind of changed. Well, wrong. If you open any other level levels, this is the welcome level. Let's go back to our main level and you can see everything is back to normal. Now, if you want to avoid opening levels, you may want to save your lighting settings, the default lighting settings in a special level sequence. So every time you change your light, it will be back to normal. So here, if we move, you can see these turn on and it looks so nice and warm. So let's bring this back to something like 11, save it. The best thing to do is to have multiple level sequences of how you want your light to be and then mix and match these with your shots. Instead of adding your shot, then your camera and everything related to one shot, that's how you work with the level sequence. Now, if you, Larry, or anyone else is interested in a cinematic live stream, also let me know in the comments. Let's move to the seventh question. Here we have Marie Coop, Jumari Coop. Sorry, I am hooked and surely going to join these classes. By the way, do you do one-on-one -on -one training? Yes, we do. We have small groups, we have smaller groups, and we also have weekly events for everyone. So if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one training or a training for your team, you can check out our academy or reach out to me or our support team and we can answer any of your questions. Now, question number eight. Great channel. Thank you. Thank you too. Is it necessary to use ray tracing to work with Lumen? Because I have RTX 3060 and I see that it looks grainy. That's correct. And I feel that is it is ray tracing. You are correct. And yes, you can use Lumen without ray tracing. You can disable that from going to your project. So you can do that from your project settings. If you go to settings and you go to project settings, we need to find the rendering settings. So under engine, scroll down a little bit until you find rendering. And from here, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down until you see Lumen here where we have support hardware ray tracing. If you disable this, this will completely disable hardware ray tracing on your scene. Now, Lumen on the software side still uses some form of ray tracing. All right, so one other way to get rid of the noise completely is to use baked lighting instead of using Lumen because Lumen will still use ray tracing, but that will be software ray tracing if you're not using hardware ray tracing to in order to work and it uses that against signed mesh distance fields. We will definitely dive deeper into Lumen and its technical aspects in the third part of our tutorial series. So stay tuned and if you have any other questions, just let me know. Let's go to the ninth question. So this is great. Please upload the second part soon. And yes, there is a second part in the progress. I just wanted to know what questions you have. So technically, this is me asking you a question. Expect the second part in mid to end September next month. Now, question number 10 and the final one from Nick on one of our tests with cesium and large scale worlds where I'm building a digital twin of Dubai. He asked, I know this is work in progress, but what the FPX is like and can it run via VR for desktop? The VR part is planned for next year for the FPS is 40 to 60 frames per second, depending on where we look, because this is a big, big project and I am optimizing this as I go. And parts of this project will be part of our free and paid course for 2024. So in November, we are releasing an amazing training program with Cesium to introduce architects to Unreal Engine, Cesium and building large scale context around your projects. 
So these are two questions I got from yesterday live stream and these will be the first two questions I answered in the next video from a tutorial series like this. I just wanted to highlight one of my favorite things that's happening now. One of my students at VR Division Academy made a really awesome tutorials on creating a realistic curtain with Lumen. So definitely go and check this out. And if you too is one of my students, if you have tutorials or if you want to show your work, I'd love to see your work. I'd love to see what you're working on so i'm going to leave a link for you in the description to show me what you have been working on and if it's a finished project and you are one of my students i am looking for you so we are now updating vr division academy and we're working on a student gallery and this is a call to all artists from vr division academy and for you guys who watch my tutorials on youtube if you are someone who watched a good chunk of my channel let me know i wanted to get to know you and show me your work thank you so much for watching if if you enjoyed this don't forget to leave a like this was Yahya from VR Division and I will see you in the next one bye bye